Galloway's Tech Talk at Three, Accessibility with SkyQ Voice Guide. Well, welcome everybody to uh, Galloway's Tech Talk at Three. Um, I'm really pleased today to be joined by uh, David Nason from Sky. Hi, David. How are you doing? Hi, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Delighted to be here. Excellent. Now, David, you've got a very impressive job title. Do you want to tell <laughs> us your job title again? <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I am Accessibility Lead in the Customer Experience Department here. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, well, it's, it, it's um, a, a great job you've got there at Sky and it's wonderful that you've been able to come to talk to us today about uh, what's on offer at Sky. And most excitingly for me at the moment um, is the developments with Sky Q and the voice guidance feature as well, which is great. And I know that you're going to be talking to us about that as well, which is brilliant for blind and partially sighted people. Um, but do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what and what you do at Sky and and, sure. and your history really of, and how long you've been there for? Yeah, no worries at all. Um, so I'm based in Dublin, Ireland. Um, I'm loving all these accents, by the way, the Northern English accents. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm over here in Dublin. I I'm visually impaired myself. I have RP, um, so it's been getting progressively worse, uh, as people with RP would know. Um, it's really since I was a teenager uh, onwards. I'm now in my late 30s, so uh, I've no vision basically left in the center. I still have peripheral vision, so it's the reverse, actually, of what a lot of people with RP have. With the tunnel vision, I've kind of reversed tunnel vision, in a sense. Um, so I suppose 10 between 10 and 15 years ago, I started transitioning into use out of magnification and more towards using screen readers myself. So uh, I would use JAWS at work and Mac and iPhone and Android phones and all that. I use the screen readers on all of them. So um, I suppose what to do, you know, work-wise, I would have done sales and things like that in the past. And then I joined Sky seven years ago and I went to quality and compliance, which if you know is, you know, if you call a call center and you hear a message that says this call may be recorded for training <laughs> yeah. and quality purposes, so I was the yeah. training and quality purposes people. Um, uh, okay. Listening in, you know, not listening in live calls, but listening to call recordings and making sure our agents are, are doing everything the way they should be um, from a quality standards point of view. And that transitioned into just being a compliance team. So it was mostly focused on things like, are you are they reading the contract terms out properly? And are they, you know, data protection, all that kind of stuff. But being visually impaired, I kind of took an interest, obviously, in accessibility and just started poking people <laughs> virtually, you know what I mean, asking questions, got, got in touch with some people, talking to product leads, things like that about accessibility. And over the years, I just found little opportunities to get involved in things, you know, testing apps during development and things like that. And the team kind of began to build then in terms of um, accessibility work at Sky over the last few years. And I've been able to actually transition into doing accessibility as my actual job in the last couple of years so that's been that's amazing <laughs> so I suppose my focus is on now um, I was in the compliance team for a while as I say but now I'm in the customer experience so really my job is to be the voice of the customer so to be listening to you guys the customer the the public who are visually impaired or who have hearing impairments or cognitive physical any sort of disabilities or additional needs at all assistive technology users and uh, getting that kind of feedback in and understanding it and obviously giving the information back to you guys as well um, back to the back to customers and making sure our advisors or agents on the phones and things are up to speed with what we offer um, that kind of thing as well and um, yeah really just being that customer Excellent. focused person making sure customers are, are happy um, What's going yeah. and customer feedback's you know so important isn't it mm -hmm. um and not enough i don't think enough companies kind of put enough resources into that and and i think that's you know obviously with sky it's great that you guys are, are doing that you know you, there's a you know there's a huge kind of customer base out there um you mm -hmm. know with, with visual with visual impairments um and uh, we love watching television and we want it to be as as accessible as possible and it's great that you know and i suppose like we, we were talking about you know a whole range of um services that sky offer you know ar around accessibility and you know i mean we're talking about the sky q box today but also you've done a lot of work on your apps as well mm -hmm. you know to make those accessible with screen readers um which which you know which is also great and um there's, there's always kind of been a dedication there i remember Oh, it must have been about, you know, um, three or four years ago because I was using Sky Plus before Sky Q. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you did a lot of work on that app as well um, with the RNIB, which was great as well. Yeah, that app came out, I think it was 2014, that kind of 
there was a major overhaul of the Sky Plus app and that was just as I had joined Sky. A couple, and that's one of the first avenues I got into talking to people actually because I I just sent them kind of compliments on I love what you've done with this app because um, they did a really good job at voiceover but it wasn't at that point really embedded into everything we did. So the Sky Plus came out great uh, great voiceover support but then you went and got the Sky Go app and it wasn't so good with voiceover, you know. So what we've really done and I have a colleague Claire Davidson who's digital accessibility manager she's just put so much work in with the development teams the design teams everyone is involved in these things and getting accessibility into their ways of working from the beginning you know what I mean so that they're not going to get into the end about to release a product and go oh wait voiceover doesn't work you know what I mean it's all about trying to get it right you know built into the process and now, yeah, the likes of Sky Go and My Sky, I think, are both excellent now with voiceover. I'm sure there's still little things we'd like to improve in them, of course, but for the most part, they work very well. Yeah, and talk back, I should say. I know Android people don't like when we uh, focus just on, on, on iOS. Yeah, it's kind of an ongoing development all the time, isn't it, with the with these mm -hmm. things because things change as well. Um, yeah. So you never set in stone, and it, it's I suppose it's kind of like with 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 the voice guidance feature as well. You could delay and delay and delay releasing that. Yeah. You can keep making it better, but eventually you need people to start using it to oh, then kind of feed it back in, don't you? I suppose yeah. at the end of the day. So yeah. I've had, I mean, me me myself, I've I've, I've been with Sky for oof, probably since about two thousand and six. Um, so I've been with Sky quite a long time now, and they've. They've, they've always had a focus on accessibility and, and what I was really impressed with was kind of the um, the customer service, and you know, which I've always thought has been good, whether it's a technical problem or, you know, I want to find out about upgrading my package or whatever it might be, but particularly with technical problems, it's been quite good and that you do get put through to the accessibility team. So I just wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about if you, if you become a Sky user or maybe mm -hmm. you're not you are, you're not a Sky user at the moment or you are one, how do you register? How do you get involved and um, get put through to the accessibility team? Yeah, of course. You can, yeah, it, it is great. They, they set that up or probably around that time when you joined, I think, was probably when the accessibility team got set up. And now it's a, it's a massive team. I think there's four or 500 people probably. They're largely Dunfermline, but they're also in Stockport, which I think is near you guys, isn't it? And uh, Sheffield. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, you know, a large number of people working on it. And uh, it support people with disabilities. They also support things like uh, vulnerability, other kind of vulnerabilities, or finance and things like that as well. And uh, people in uh, with long-term illness and those kinds of things as well. But a big part of what they do is uh, is working for our customers with uh, disability and assistive technology users. So what you can do is um, you can go. We have a website which is skyaccessibility.sky where you can um, learn a bit more about what we offer. And if you click the help link there, it'll take you into our sky.com as well, um, help section where you've got more information about the various things we, we offer. But there's also a register information on that, on skyaccessibility.sky about how to register. Um, but essentially it's speaking to, so if you're speaking to a standard agent, you can ask, you tell them that you're visually impaired and you'd like to be put through to accessibility and they'll do that. Or, um, I don't have the number off my <laughs> off the top of my head, but I can send it through to you afterwards. There's a direct number you can call as well to get through yeah. to them. Yeah. But if you go to skyaccessibility.sky again and click contact, you'll get the contact options to, to get through to us directly in, in the accessibility team as well. Um, cool. And there's various options available. You can email or you can live chat or you can, or web message, or you can uh, call, of course. So. Yeah. So if you're thinking about, even if you're thinking about, you know, kind of um, subscribing to Sky, that's a conversation you could have at that mm -hmm. time as well and, and register with accessibility. One thing I noticed, which I really like, is um, I've got Sky Talk. I've got the, the phone. And, oh, yeah. and when I ring, I, I dial 150 from my phone and I get put straight through to the accessibility department, which which I think is really good. So I get, I get like streamlined, um, which yeah, I think is really so great. I believe the way the system works is if once we've registered you with accessibility, if you then call Sky, even call the general number for Sky, it will recognize that phone number. You know, you've registered that phone number yeah. with us. So it, it automatically says, oh, he's got an accessibility flag on his account. We'll put him through to the accessibility team. So um, great that. Would work, yeah. Skip the queues. Skip the well, queues. Well, it's great. You do get through quite, <laughs> you do tend to get through faster then. 
quite yeah. fast. Uh, very a- absolutely. Often. And actually, when you've got like, if you, if not that I don't have many technical problems, but sometimes it's not always a technical problem. Sometimes it's like I'm doing something wrong. So can you can you show me what I'm doing wrong or how do I do this? How do I do this? Yeah. Yeah. And and the great thing about you know the the advisors, they they're so down to earth. You know, they, 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 they're really friendly and you end up having a, you know, while you're talking with them, you end up having a chat with them. No, they're having lovely, a yeah. general, and they generally, they're genuinely interested in you as a person and how you use Sky as well. And that's one of the things that I really like about it. That's it's how I found yeah. out. Yeah, that's how I found out about voice guidance as well. well it was actually go. from one of your colleagues, you know, they said, oh, we've got this voice guidance coming along soon. And I said, oh, right, is that a new thing? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, um, it's really good, you know, because they were they obviously were testing it at the time. Um, so that's how I found out about it. So, oh, there you, you go. Because, yeah, I've done I've done workshops with those guys, including actually when voice guidance was uh, just in the month or two, a couple of months before it, lo- it rolled out, we did workshops with all of those advisors um, to show it to them and take them through to make sure they were up to date with it. Um, yeah. And they're so lovely and they're so passionate. I've met them in person as well, pre-COVID. For, uh, I've, I've gone over and done some sh- sessions with them. And they're so, pa- they love their job, like so many of them. I know you can't say that as a general thing as everybody, but for the most part, they really do seem to love their job and they love, um, yeah, talking to you, talking it's to the customers. Yeah. And, and, yeah. It's important. So, oh, yeah. And, and yeah, they've got to try it for themselves. They've got to understand it and know it, haven't they? You know, mm-hmm. um, so they're not just reading off a script. This is what you do. They've kind of mm-hmm. got their own personal experience of using the technology, which, yeah. you know, sometimes like, it's frustrating when, you, when you're when you on a line to somebody else and, you know, they're just reading off a script and you're like, yeah, I have done yeah. that. I have done that. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you've never used this technology before, have you? So it's That's good when, when you've got people that, have, that are using it and, and, and they've yeah. got it, you know. And I think something like voice guidance, or any screen reader in a way, until you've seen it and, or heard it, <laughs> whatever that matter, in action, it's hard to really conceptualize it and they don't, it clicks when they actually use it themselves and see it themselves. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So in, term, in terms of, um, in terms of other services, I mean, one thing that I did get through Sky was, uh, you know, if you, if you do find the remote control quite difficult, you do have, I think it's quite good. You do have like an accessibility mm-hmm. uh, or an accessible remote control with bigger buttons on and, and things yeah. like that, don't you? Which is really good. Yeah. It's bi- just bigger buttons and they're kind of higher contrast, uh, kind of bigger, writing on them as well so people with uh, low vision find them re- find it very useful totally blind people sometimes find it useful as well because it's of just bigger targets and uh, to hit with your uh, tactile as well and then people with uh, various motor or physical uh, disabilities often find it very useful as well it's easier to kind of grip and hold as well so yeah it's quite yeah. a popular popular thing and it's free of charge if you have um if you're re- if you talk to our accessibility team they'll, they'll well actually when you're getting your if you're getting sky installed or even engineer in your home they often have them in the van so you can ask them for it or when you're speaking to our accessibility team they can send one out to you yeah brilliant and we've got accessible apps we've got you know audio description um we've got you know um we've got you know we've got features for people with hearing loss as well but the one thing obviously that we're most excited about obviously the new development that we've that we've we've been waiting for and now we have it is is voice guidance and um you know i can't tell you you know um how many times i have to either get my phone out and magnify the screen or i have to get up and go right to the screen and see what's on the screen because i can't see it or i have to get my wife to do it and now well it was emotional when i first tried voice guidance and i could just sit there on the couch and just navigate around the screen and listen it was it was like it's like someone had opened my world up so you know it, it's a great development and i know you're going to kind of talk to us about that now and give us a bit of a give, give us a bit of a demonstration as well yeah i can do i know it was um i i, I was the same to be honest with you because I, I i need i need the screen readers myself as i say so uh it was such a big development and it was it's funny because like i was in the background kind of working on not you know i'm not a technical i'm not working on it in the sense of developing it but in terms of we did some customer trials and that kind of stuff and actually just feeding into the what should it say here what should it say on this screen in this situation i was kind of a part of those conversations so i knew about this thing for a year and a half before i came out and i couldn't tell anybody about it you couldn't tell anyone you're (laughs) excited about it you just want to like tell them you want to tell all your visually impaired friends as well and like you can't they're all probably going I can't see the screen. I don't know what's on. And you're like, yeah, it's coming. It's on yeah, its way. Exactly. It's like, oh, just wait. <laughs> so, yeah, so, was, so you're, really you're a big user of it yourself then, essentially, which is great. I am an, I'm, I'm in a very unfortunate position where right this moment, I'm living in an apartment where we're not able to get a Sky dish. So I, <laughs> I have to go up to my parents' house if I want to use Sky. 
Um, but hopefully that will change in the not too distant future and I can get back to having Sky. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, but That's yeah, great. when I am using it, yeah, I'm 100% uh, dependent on it as well. Um, okay. I suppose for people, I suppose if you want to take a step back and say, what is voice guidance? It's essentially a screen reader for SkyQ. So wherever the cursor, if you want to call that, so you move, you press the arrows on your remote control to move around the various menus, the TV guide and all that kind of stuff. Then the screen reader, the voice guidance will read out wherever it is. So um yeah, makes it possible to independently, yeah, manage your yeah your TV watching now for the first time, really. Cool. Okay. So, how do you? So, when you obviously you want to use this feature, and um, how do you initiate it? How do you get going with the with the with you've the got, with the voice guidance? You've got a couple of options. You can either, if you have a SkyQ uh, voice remote, so the one with the microphone uh, for voice control. Um, some of them have a button on the sort of the side and some of them have it on the front yeah. um, underneath the down arrow button uh, or is it underneath the home button, I think, which is itself underneath that down arrow button. Uh, I don't have that one myself in front of me, but uh, you press and hold that and you can give a command. So if you say voice guidance on, that will bring it on. Um, there's various other phrases you can use. You can like talking guide and various different things, but uh, okay. so you don't necessarily have to remember that it's called voice guidance. People, that was something, that's an actually something we introduced in the most recent update to expand the number of phrases you could actually use to turn it on and off because maybe people didn't yeah. remember exactly what do I need to say. <laughs> so to try and kind of think of what things people might say. So if you say start talking guide or something like that, it should work as well. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. That's the thing with voice technology, on, isn't it? One. Yeah. Voice technology is very much like people you gotta use it in different ways, you use different phrases. It's yeah. the same with the A lady, isn't it? You know, and you, yeah. you've got to you've got to account for what people might say, even if it's not the correct thing to say. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if people have feedback on like things they're trying to, that they thought would work and didn't or something, you know, we'd we'd love to hear, love to hear about them and uh, you know, it's always possible to add more, add more of those kind of phrases on to make it as easy as possible for people. So you can say, yeah, voice guidance on, voice guidance off, or some other phrases. Um, or you can go into settings. Now, obviously, if you don't have voice guidance on already, you can't see the settings to actually turn it on potentially. But I did uh, map it out that like, and this is on our on the help article on our website. But it's like you press the home button, you go down eleven times, <sighs> and you go yeah. right, you go down three times, you go left, right again, and you go down five times, and then you go right. Again. Oh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to have to try that now on my <laughs> Skybox to see if that works. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Thing is, I have to make sure every time a new update comes out, I have to make sure they didn't move something in the menu, <laughs> <laughs> and I have to rewrite that. But because uh, I just figured not everybody has, we figured not everybody has a, a voice remote necessarily. So, um, or you might have one on your main box, but you mightn't have it on your mini box and things like that. And voice guidance does work on the mini boxes as well. That's the multi-room boxes for people who don't know. Um, so yeah, it works on all of those as well. So excellent, excellent, brilliant. Okay. So we're going to have a little, um, are we going to hear voice guides then? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll unmute my TV, but then I'll pause the box so that you're not um, having to hear whatever program it's on. I think I'm watching the Olympics right now, am I? Yeah, that's a good point. So when you, uh, I've noticed that, that when you, um, when the voice guide speaks, it will, it will dub the sound of your TV. Yeah, it, will, it ducks it will out. Dub yeah. It, duck it out, won't it? Yeah, it goes completely silent actually. And then uh, pretty much, I think, and then... Obviously, though, in between, if I, you know, let it speak out and then it'll come back in again and go out again. So like audio ducking on a on a, on a a mobile. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but I find when I'm doing demos, it's easier just to, just to pause the box so you're not uh, getting the TV background sound bleeding in and out all the time. So I, I've already turned it on, but what I did is I just pressed the mic and said voice guidance on. And then now one thing, and this is something we're looking to fix in a future update you'll notice when you when you do first enable it whether it's through the settings or through the voice um it won't give you a message to say voice oh, guidance enabled right okay yeah uh, noticed so that, you yeah. might do you might turn it on and think oh i don't know if that's worked so all you do is just press the home button which is the one below the uh, down arrow and uh, it's a nice big pill shaped button below the down arrow uh, press that and it'll take you to the main menu and if it's speaking then it's on you know what i mean you've done it right so um but yeah that's something we're hoping to fix in a future update so that it will actually give you same with recordings as well i think when you set a recording it doesn't currently say you know recording or some you know those confirmation messages or something will add in the future um but okay i'll press the home button main menu press the home button 
You might, uh, might need to turn that up a little bit if you can, David. Yeah. She's just going to ask you that. Okay. <laughs> testing, again. testing, one, two. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to know. <laughs> Main menu. Press up or down for different categories. Yeah. Home. Good. One I can go a bit louder if you want. Press right or select to choose. Yeah, I think that's loud enough, actually. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So I'll just do that slow because I talked over it. So when I press the home button, it takes me into the main menu. So this is what you hear. Main menu. Press up or down for different categories. Home. One of 14. Press right or select to choose. So we got a few different things. So first it told me what section I'm in, main menu, and it told me a hint, which was go up and down for different categories. So that's the kind of, that's telling me what type of menu I'm in. It's a vertical list kind of menu. Then it told me what item I'm on, which is home. And it said, gave me an index, one of 14, which we're all familiar with from things like JAWS, I'm sure. And then it gave me a hint of what I can do on this item, which is go right or press select or select to choose it. So we have the, with two types of hints. We've got the sort of section hint, the page hint, if you like, and then the item hint. Um, so that was kind of the thinking behind that. Um, and I'll come back to that later because you can turn those off when they start to get annoying or anything like that. But so I know, okay, I can go up or down on this menu. I'm at the top because I'm at number one. So if I went down one. TV guide, two of 14, press right or select to choose. So I don't get the main menu press up down thing again because I only get that once when I first land in this section. But I do get the item hint because I'm on a, on a, on the item. So I get TV guide, which is what it is, two of fourteen, and then the hint, and I can go right down through the menu. Recording, catch up TV on demand, Sky Cinema, Sky Store, Sports, Kids. It keeps going. Uh, Nine of 14. Press right or so you get the idea of that menu. Um, I can go, I can go, I can arrow quickly as well. So I just arrowed seven times and I landed on TV Guide 2 of 14. So you don't have to let it speak out. You can, it'll, you, it, when you press a button, it'll interrupt itself. TV Guide, press up or down for different genres. Press left to go back. All channels. So there, 17, press right or select to choose. So there again, I get a, I'm in, I went into the, t, went right to go into the TV guide and it tells me again, I'm in a up down kind of menu and I'm on number five. It's, it's funny that that one lands on number five <laughs> rather than uh, it landing on number one. That's because above that, you've got things like favorites and radio and stuff like that. But um, so all channels is the one it lands on. So this is where you're going to go, you know, you, you're wondering what's on TV right now. You're going to go to your TV guide, aren't you? And then yeah. then you can browse through the, the channels and then you can obviously, I know you'll probably go to it in a second, you, you can find out what's on now, what's coming up and things yeah, like that. exactly. So like it landed on all channels. So I can if I say, oh, well, actually, I know it's movies I want, I can just arrow down till I get to movies. 80. Last one. Documentary. Kids. Movies and there's movies, and I would go 17. Press right or select to choose. I would go right on movies if I know it's a movie channel I want to go to. But if I go back up and it's all channels I want, it's just one you know, you wanted BBC or something, Kids. you'd go into all channels, Six. all channels. Five of 17. Press right or select to choose. And now for me, you won't hear BBC because I'm in Ireland, so it's RTE 101 is actually RTE 1. Um, ah, okay, but. Um, what I when I go right into this next section, I'll be in the TV guide grid, and what again it'll tell me that I'm in a grid and that I can go up, down, left, and right to explore in here, and then um, I can go and explore that grid. So all channels, press up, down, left, or right to navigate through the TV guide. RTE one HD one hundred and one. Select to view in mini TV. Press right for upcoming program. So it landed on one hundred and one. RTE one told me that. The hint I got there, you might have noticed, was press select to watch a mini TV. So people who have some vision will may know that you have kind of a, a little mini screen up the top left of the screen where, so if I selected this, it will leave me. I'll still be in this in this menu, but the channel will just change in that mini yeah. box kind of thing. And yeah. then if, and the, so if I do that. Select a view in full screen. It gives me that hint of, uh, I'll just have to pause it, hang on a second, but it gives me that hint of, um, one sec, I'll just, 
was muted for a second. Um, it gives me that hint there that says press select to watch in full screen. So it's telling me, um, yeah, you've, you've, you've added it to the mini screen, but if you actually want to put it into the full screen, then you will uh, need to press select again. Um, it's a good feature that because um, if you don't have that, you end up you end up like you might just want to like listen in or watch in to see or do I really want to watch this or you know if you just cut what I call channel hopping if you like channel yeah. hopping you don't want to leave the TV guide because it's because then you've got to like how do I get back to the TV guide so it's a good way of doing that I think yeah that's the idea anyway um, I'm just gonna go into it um... That's what happens when you actually select a channel. It then uh, it will tell you what um, channel you're on. But I'm going to so hang on a second. I'll go back to the TV guide in a second. But I'll just show you this while I'm here. So if I go channel up, RTE two HD one hundred and two Select to view the mini TV guide. So you get that again when you, if you're just in full screen mode and you're just going pressing the up and down channel buttons, it'll tell you the name of the channel you're on and what's on now as well. So you can explore that way as well. And um, you can also go up and down through the channels on the on the mini guide at the bottom of the screen, the kind of the strip that comes up at the bottom of the screen. It's all uh, working with voice guidance as well. I'll go back into the main TV main guide menu. for a second. TV guide. TV guide. All channels. Press up, down, left or right to navigate through the TV guide. RTE 1 HD 101. Select to view in mini TV. Press right for upcoming program. So press right for upcoming program. So I can go down the chat down to go down through the different channels and I go right to explore what's on on this channel that I'm currently on. So American Housewife. Finished. Duration 25 minutes. Video format HD. Subtitles. Encouraged, discouraged, Katie and Tommy make friends with a luxury hotel manager whose promise of access to complimentary rooms around the world sounds incredibly enticing. HD F5 EP8. Select to view in mini TV. Press R to record series. Press R again to record one. And again, I'll come back to those hints because it, it, there is quite a lot there, but uh, I'll go see what's on later this evening. I'll just press right a bunch of times. Island Garden Heroes. RTE News, 9 o'clock. Starts at 9 p.m. Duration, 35 minutes. Prime time. I want to see one Fair with City. It. Starts at 8 p.m. Duration, 30 minutes. Video format HD. Subtitles. Will works to con Bosco. Pete refuses Dolores Olive Branch. Tommy warns Zach not to take advantage of Sasha's free house. HD, EP83. Select to choose Fair City. Press R to record series. Press R again to record one. So this is one of the big things we got uh, that was really useful from our customer testing that we did uh, late last year was what, how, because there's a lot of information to tell people when they're in the TV guide. Um, you know, in terms of the name of the show, the time it's on, how long it's on, the, what yeah. is the description, badges as we call them, which is things like your HD subtitles, audio description. Obviously, I, none of those shows had AD, but if it did, it would have said audio description as well. When you heard subtitles, it would have said audio description there, so, which is obviously really important to us. And what order did we, did we want that? So what we've come up with is that, that it's like gives you the show name first and the time. They're the kind of the most important things. Then we put the audio description and subtitles kind of information before the big long description of what the show is. Because, you know, because that's the longest piece of information that kind of makes sense to have it at the end was kind of what we, the conclusion we came to. But there was a few little things were swapped around during the development. Um, so hopefully people find that um, order right. And if I want to know what's on RT2 at that same time, I don't have to go all the way across again or anything. I just go down. RTE2 HD 102, Tokyo 2020, today at the game. Starts at 7 p.m. Yeah, Duration, so. two hours. Video format HD. Subtitles. Sarah Maloney presents highlights from Tokyo 2020. Eight. Home and away. I'll go back anyway, but you get the idea of that. So you don't have to Press up or go down all the way back or anything. You can just um, explore the grid. Main menu. Press up or down for different categories. Um, now I'll just show you the... Two of 14. Press right or select to choose. <laughs> 
are a couple of others. So you can go into your recordings as well, and that will tell you all of your recordings that you have selected at the moment. So you'd go yeah. in and recordings. Most recent. And that's a grid. Press up, down, left, or right to navigate. Salvage hunters. Thirty-six episodes. Select to view all episodes. Column one of four, row one. Select to choose. So it's giving you grid coordinates there. Column one of four, um, and then row one. Um, and then it's telling you how many episodes you have, that kind of information as well. And then you can select that and it'll open up the list. I'll just show you how the difference without Main the hints, menu. I think. Press and then I'd say we're good. Categories. So I'm going to go down to Recordings. settings. They are good, the hints, when you first start. But I, I, I must admit, I turn mine off eventually. Yeah. Press up, down. Music. Press. Where have I gone? Games. Press right. I, I went to the wrong place. Main menu. I was trying Press to do it quickly and did it wrong. <laughs> Nine of forty. Music. Oh, I went into app. music. Eleven of settings. Settings. Status. Parental. System info. Parental. Accessibility. Accessibility. Mm -hmm. Press up or down for categories. And this Based is on audio description. Is set to audio description is set to on you'll hear an additional commentary that describes the action in a program where this service is available so this is also where you can get your audio description um settings so you can there is another way you, you may know through the question mark the help menu but this is a way you can turn audio description on and off um, beep on audio description. Beep on audio description. On, you'll hear a beep when you tune to a channel that is showing an audio described program two of six select to turn on um, so she said there that, that if you have beep on audio description on, that means when you're ho channel hopping, as you were saying, when you get to a channel that has an AD yeah. show, it'll make a beeping sound, so you know. Quite a low-pitched beep, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's good, that. Subtitles. Subtitles, of course. Highlight programs. Highlight programs. If you do a vision, uh, some usable vision, you can have it highlight in the TV guide where audio description or the subtitles are on a show. Highlight programs. Um, high contrast, high contrast mode box, again for people with partial sight. Um, a lot of people six, find that. To turn on. A lot of people find that high contrast mode uh, very useful, um, easier to see, and especially since as well, sometimes there's different backgrounds and things uh, going on on the on the menus and yeah. stuff. Where if you put high contrast on, you just get a nice black. Yeah, but you know, there's a, there's there's a few people that I know that have got Sky and I showed them that high contrast mode and they preferred that and they're fully sighted as well. Yeah, they found it easier to see and yeah. It's definitely one of those features. It's not just for people who kind of identify themselves as visually impaired or something. It could just yeah. be for anyone can prefer high contrast to be honest um, and then we get to voice guidance on on with hints. Press up or down for options. One of three, select to choose. so if you turn the first time you turn voice guidance on with the voice remote it'll say it'll turn it on with hints by default um, if you go to the settings here though as I did you have actually two different options or well, three you've got off you've got on with hints and you've got on without hints ah. on without hints Press so up or down for options. I will select that, and now I'll go back to the main menu. Main menu. This is this is when you're a pro at using it. You just turn the hints off, and then you, yeah, yeah, you're gonna be a lot quicker. You, getting you kind of learned. I know this is a grid, or I know this is an up and down menu. I know I press right to select stuff. Yeah, I don't kind of need this. And then it means as well, though, if we say have a redesign of a certain screen, like you know when you open a program, we call it the show page, you know where you get the play and you get yeah. the info and other episodes and stuff like that. Had a big bit of an overhaul last year at one point. You know what I mean? They, they redesigned. Yes, it. I remember so that. Yeah. If if you got voice guidance and you think I know how to use those screens, and then you go in and it's like, what on earth is going on here? You can go back, turn hints on, get a bit, get your uh, bearings on that page with hints, and then go back to having it off again when you've relearned it. So we do think, yeah, people. Most for the most part, people will use it for a few days or a week or a few weeks, uh, and then turn it off, um, depending on you know their own preferences. But a lot of people will turn it off once you say, like you say, they become a pro. But um, they will, yeah, they're still there if you need them in the future. And then some people have told us they like them and they they plan to keep them on. So um, is there you know, a, is there a way of turning the hints on and off with your voice, or is that is that not possible yet? Uh, not yet, but it is a, it is a feature request we've, we've yeah, put into that'd the be, that. That'd be quite um, good, that. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're figuring out the mechanics of exactly uh, how to do it, but um, I believe that will. That's definitely on the list of things they're looking at anyway. 
because uh, I agree that would be great. Um, so yeah, like the difference here now, if I press the home button, it's... Main menu, home, one of 14. So just main menu, home, one of 14. I didn't get any of the press this to do this, press this to do that. Um, yeah. So once you know your way around, it's, it makes it feel a lot slicker, actually, because I just TV go TV guide, guide, TV guide all channels, all, right? And all then channels. if I go onto that American show on RT now. Finished. Duration, 25 minutes. Video format HD. Subtitles. Encourage, discourage. Katie and Tommy make friends with a luxury hotel manager whose promise of access to complimentary rooms around the world sounds incredibly enticing. HD S5 EP8. But I didn't get any of that. Press to select this program. Yeah, yeah. Press record. Press R for record once. Press R to record twice. All of that stuff's cut out. Or if I go to a, if I actually go to a channel now, so just say I exit. Um, the menu entirely. Main menu. So if I press dismiss to do that, and if I say go up a channel. RTE one HD. 101 my kitchen rules australia ordinary story so again that was much faster just tell me the name of the channel and the show yeah. it didn't tell me uh, all that other stuff about how to dismiss the mini guide and all that kind of stuff so you're going to get less audio duck in that way as well aren't you by not having it speak as much yeah so, you're getting yeah. the show starting to play quicker <laughs> i yeah. suppose for yeah. you, um from a hearing point of view yeah yeah because i don't think there's a way of is i don't think there's a way yet of um stopping the uh from you know from like you know like Obviously, if you're on uh, an iPhone or you're on Jaws or something, mm. you can hit Control key to stop the speech from speaking. I know, it's my at, best at, friend on my yeah, computer. Yeah. At the moment, it, it doesn't do that. So you've just got to be patient uh, with yeah. that as well, haven't you? Like I say, you, you know? can interrupt it now. So you don't have to, you know, if you're in a menu, you don't have to wait for it to speak out or anything like that. You can, you know, just continue. So you don't have to listen to that whole description of that show if you don't want yeah. to because you can just skip to the next one and the next one but yes it would um it doesn't i suppose in an ideal world it'd be nice if you could uh pause it somehow i suppose the mute button on the remote itself maybe if you need to just take us <laughs> take a second to take <laughs> in that all in good time all in good yeah. time we're being nitpicky there really i suppose but <laughs> that's the whole thing about developing something like this isn't it and, and yeah. get that feedback come in as well said version one we you know there are a bit there are some screens here that aren't aren't built yet for voice guidance but it was it came to a point where like well we, we want to get this thing out and yeah then we can we can build on it rather than like you say we could have spent another year building it before we, did, <laughs> before we released yeah, it yeah you know? that's the main thing yeah. isn't it yeah brilliant brilliant excellent so the the voice itself um are you are you looking at you know obviously a, a lot of people visually impaired the more you use um, a voice technology you tend to speed it up a little bit as well mm. And is, is that something that you can do or is that something maybe that you might look at doing in the future? Yeah, that's one for the future. It's um, it's definitely, it's been on our, it's been on the agenda since before we released it. It would have been one of those things we'd have, um, we'd have identified as expected feedback almost, <laughs> if you know what I mean? That we, I think people are going to come to us and ask this question. So it, they're looking, they're kind of scoping out what's the best way to do it. And they what they'd love to know actually, if anyone has any opinions on, you know, what would your expectations be? You know what I mean? Because it may not be realistic to have a kind of like you have on a phone where you've got a slider, yeah. everything from zero to 100. It might be a case that you need two or three or four settings. So, what's enough? Is three, is four enough? You know what I mean? So, it'd be interesting to hear what people think about that kind of thing. Probably going to be like, yeah. You need a slower one than this as well, or is this, yeah. kind of, uh, you know, that kind of thing? Like, like slow, medium, fast, or mm. faster. Slow, medium, yeah. fast, faster, maybe, maybe yeah. sort of like that. Um, you don't want to buy, you know what yeah. I mean? I, I, there's a lot of people who use, you know, screen readers and jaws and things like that. And I can't even, and oh, I use them, yeah. but I can't even tell what it's saying. Yeah, and, and I, My brain's not that quick <laughs> to take the information in, you know? Um, so yeah, I suppose a, a little bit faster would be good, but I think for most people that speed uh, will be pretty good, to be honest. We you thought know? it was a good... You know, if we could only have one speed at the start, obviously we wanted to make sure it was slow enough that it was easy for people to understand uh, and people who aren't used to using screen readers. Because we think there's probably people using this that don't use a screen reader on a computer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you can see the t they can see their phone or they can see the computer, but they can't see the screen from across the room. Now, blind people and vision impaired people who use screen readers day to day are the primary audience for this, but there is potentially a wider audience, slightly wider audience as well. 
Um, so we wanted to get it so it wasn't too fast, but equally we didn't want it so slow that it would annoy those people who use green readers. <laughs> so. The thing, the thing is as well, there will be there will be lots of people out there that have got Sky Q that might not have come across this yet as well, and mm. um, obviously that's one thing that that I've spoken to a number of people the last couple of weeks, and they've got Sky Q or the family's got Sky Q, and I've said, oh, have you not tried the Vistas voice guidance yet? And they're like, oh no, I haven't tried that yet. So I've been telling loads of people about it, mm. and obviously the more people that know about it in, in the in the visual impairment community, uh, the more the more people will be interested, and they'll have more of a reason for uh, subscribing to Sky as well. That's if you know, be, yeah. if that, if that's there for we've them. had people come back to us, and you know, um, people who had left Sky you know and they've told us they've come back because of this and things like that which is it's great to hear and it's great for the team who built it to, to hear they spent you know 18 months building this thing and uh to hear that it's um it's actually landed as well as it has has been a huge boost to them actually they've been delighted with the feedback mm, absolutely and uh, you know i hope that it will it will actually get more and more uh people um, or more organisations and company looking at Sky as an example and saying, mm -hmm. "Come on, we need to buck our ideas up, and we need to we need to build, you know, not necessarily the same thing, but we need we need to make our products more accessible. We need to think about ways we can do that, and and, and it will drive it will drive the accessibility on, you know, in within mainstream technology, which I think is really important. Yeah, and I think it's something we've all experienced, especially with iPhone and Android, you know, having built-in screen readers and stuff that we started to take that for, not for granted, but we kind of started to see that's how it should be. Yeah. Everybody should be able to use a product out of the box would be my, you know, my firm opinion. And it drives us as well to make other changes. So just say we, if we, if this is making more people with visual impairments want to join Sky, that also means we've an extra onus to put more into things like audio description or accessible remote controls or the other things that people want, because there's more people there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of showing really there is an audience there, you know, that want this stuff. So let's let's do it, you know. So I'm guessing when when if you if you subscribe to Sky and they come and set it up for you, mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming that the, the 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 technicians, the guys that come out and do the setup, will will they know about voice guidance as well? Will they'll be able to show people how to use it? Yeah, they, they certainly should do anyway. Um yeah, we've had um yeah, the, the engineers have been you know, all briefed on it, and a lot of them would have it at home as well. Would have would be familiar with it. That's right. Yeah, definitely. yeah. Um, so yeah, they um, they can show it to you and maybe give you a, a quick a quick tour of the box. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they all, yeah, that's what I mean because they always do that every time I've had when I got my Sky Q boxes installed and the Sky Plus as well. They 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 spent about five minutes saying, you know, this is how you use the box. This is how you do your recordings. You know, mm. And they're, they're showing you the buttons on the remote talking you through it. So that's why I thought, you know, that that's a good thing that they do that. And then if it was someone yeah. visually impaired, they could and I know take the, them through it. The remote can be a tricky thing. We do have, I mean, it, 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 I have various ideas of what we could do. But at the moment, um, one thing you can do if you go on sky.com and search for remote control guides, you can at least... We have kind of a you know a guide to what each button on a remote is, and then it, yeah. it, they have a picture, but the picture has all text on it to say you know top left this button, to, you know middle top this button, you know what I mean. So the, to help give you a guide as to what the remotes are. Oh, so that's good, isn't it? Just go to come and have a have a look for those if if you're kind of thinking, well, it said press R to record, but I don't know where the R button is. <laughs> that's it. Or, yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. That's brilliant. I did a really good demonstration of that, um, David. So thank you very much for that. And 